Close your eyes, watch your breath. Try to be with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Don't go wandering off and letting the breath run an automatic pilot. Because it does that all the time anyhow. And that's good for keeping you alive, but that's all you get out of it. Whereas if you pay careful attention to it and continual attention to it, you'll see things you never saw before, both in the breath and in the mind. Because we use the breath as a mirror for the mind. Something happens in the breath, you can ask yourself, is that a f coming from a physical cause or from a mental cause? And sometimes you can catch the mind doing things that you wouldn't have caught it doing before as you're trying to stay with the breath. So try to keep this continuous, not only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but as you're going through the day, especially as you're staying here in the monastery. Here's your chance to be in a place where the values are training the mind. Now, in the world outside, the bottom line is profit, and here the bottom line is what shape is your mind in. That's a very different dynamic. So use this as your bottom line, your basic question all the time as you go through the day. When you're doing the chores around the monastery, are you with your breath? When you're eating, are you with your breath? When you're cleaning up, are you with your breath? When you're talking, are you with your breath? Talking especially is something you want to do in, in moderation. And John Fuang's old rule was that ask yourself first, is this necessary? And if it's not necessary, then don't, don't say it. Because if you find yourself going through the day chattering around, when you sit down to meditate, the mind is going to continue to want to chatter. It's got some momentum. Whereas if you learn how to put a curb on your words outside, then it's a lot easier to put a curb on them inside the mind when you're meditating. So always keep that part in mind. You might want to think in these terms. You, know, you have only so many words that you're going to be allowed in this lifetime, so you want to make sure that the words you do speak are well chosen, and you don't just throw them away. Speech is free, both in the sense of being allowed to say anything you want and also not costing anything. That's our attitude. But it does cost. It costs the qualities of the mind that might be developed by being quiet and being more observant. <coughs> so try to keep some control over your speech as you go through the day. This is one way of calming down the chatter in the mind. So it's not so much when you're sitting here with your eyes closed. You can stay focused on the breath, and everybody inside the mind is with you, because you've been training them as you go through the day. People talk about not needing to do formal meditation, which is not really true. We all need to do formal meditation, because it's during formal meditation that you can really give 100% of your attention to what's going on in the mind. But there are other people who think that the formal meditation is all. Well, it's not. The training of the mind goes throughout the day, because it's all the same mind. In John Fuang's words, Make this an agalico practice, one that's timeless, because you're looking for something timeless in the mind, so you want your practice to be timeless too. It doesn't matter what the time it is, time to eat, time to wash up, time to do work, time to meditate, it's all time to develop the mind. It becomes one time. And that's how it's going to progress.